Now, from the campus of SUNY Buffalo State, news and information for Buffalo and the surrounding communities, it's the Buffalo Review TV, produced by Stripes Media. After millions of dollars in renovations, Buffalo State College's Caudell Hall has finally reopened. Here's more on the story. After three and a half years and $21.2 million, Buffalo State College's Caudell Hall has reopened. And for all of those in the School of Professions, this is a happy occasion. The kitchen. Dr. Carol A. Donation, head of the Health, Nutrition, and Dietetics Department, spoke about some of the new additions to Caudell Hall that improved work in this department. Well, Caudell Hall's renovations have included many amenities that the students can benefit from. One is the teaching kitchen that we have on the second floor. The nation also spoke about one planned addition, the Nutrition Education Counseling Center. Students will be able to apply what they learn in counseling people and educating people. Dietetic student Laura Sturman explained the benefits the of the new equipment in Caudell. We have just like your regular kitchen prep equipment, but it's much much more than what we had in Buckham. Sturman also complimented the new second floor teaching kitchen. There's even um, TVs right on top of the prep area so you can see exactly what your instructor is doing. You don't have to like crowd around. During the construction, students usually in Caudell were moved to the classroom building and Buckham Hall. Social work department lecturer Mark Bozer described the transition to the newly renovated building. One definite thing that helps a lot is that we're all in the same area now. Before yep. we were kind of spread out and even amongst different buildings. With Caudell Hall finally finished. Buffalo State College is now free to begin work on other construction projects. Hopefully, they are met with the same enthusiasm as this building was. It's really, really amazing. For the Buffalo Review TV, I'm Edwin J. Vieira. The United Student Custom and Border Protection will be visiting Buffalo State on Tuesday, February 28th at 12.15 in Classroom Building B119 during the Bingo Pause. They will speak about important information about what they do for their occupation and any policy provision that needs to be addressed. The co-sponsors are the Criminal Justice Club and Honor Society. Other clubs and organizations are recommended to attend this event. If, if interested, you can RSVP on Bingo Connect. Lambda Sigma Upsilon Latino Fraternity Incorporated in collaboration with United Students Government and Pulse will, will be having a program called Life Out of Class. Life Out of Class is a program designed for students to hear about other leaders' experiences, gain information, as well as find opportunities on campus for self-development. Alumni from Buffalo State will share their past experiences on life after graduation to the student body. Students will get an insight, look on things you go through after graduation with dealing with loans, finding a job, and improving your credit score. The event will be held on February 22nd in Assembly Hall 1 at 6 p.m. Certainly Buffalo State's Undergraduate Commencement Committee makes adjustments to the upcoming graduation ceremony. Greg Garrett has more on the story. The 145th Commencement Ceremony will be held Saturday, May 13th in the Sports Arena. This year, the Commencement Committee made a few changes. Not only does the ceremonies begin an hour early, but the time students cross the stage has been chosen for them. Here's more on the story. This year, the number of tickets allowed per student has been cut down from five to four. The times for each ceremony has been moved up an hour, and perhaps the biggest move, the committee has divided the graduation times by schools. USG Senator and Student Representative Cassidy Sandy Bourne says that this decision is for student safety. Um, it has not always been like that, but where we was the only school who really didn't do it by, but technically speaking, Every other college graduates by school. We was the only college which, who did it. So we're just trying to bring more structure towards graduation so it's more organized and like we don't have um, overcapacity. Under the old structure, students were able to choose their commencement times, which often led to overcapacity, including last year's afternoon ceremony. Now, students in the School of Education, the professions, and individualized studies will have their ceremonies at 9 a.m. Students in the School of Arts and Humanities and the School of Natural and Social Sciences will have their ceremony at 1 p.m. Masters and CAS ceremony will be held at 5 p.m. Bourne says students have expressed disappointment, but she encourages them to think of this in a positive light. We also have to think about the bigger picture. We're, you're graduating. 
your family and your loved ones there. You can celebrate with your friends after. The commissioner committee has no intentions of going back to the original format. They say this is about safety and no longer wants to worry about the possibility of the ceremony being shut down. They are confident that this will benefit the school for years to come. For Buffalo Review TV, this is Greg Garrett. Buffalo State Community lost Bradley Doyle, a beloved friend, teammate, and student last February. The Caribbean Students Organization and the African American Students Organization presented a program and a candlelight visual in memory of Bradley last Friday evening. Bradley was a part of the basketball team, a member of ASO, and an irreplaceable. February is now known as Bradley Month in to many in remembrance of his beautiful life. The Buffalo State community misses you greatly, Bradley, and we, and we hope to continue to look down on us. The kickoff for SUNY Buffalo State's celebration of Black History Month began on February 2nd when Michaela Angela Davis, a writer, editorial director, and activist, delivered the keynote address for the college's Martin Luther King Day Jr. celebration. The Equity and Campus Diversity Office intends to host programs in February that will continue to bring the Buffalo State community together. Several different events, events are taking place in, remaining, in the remaining of February that are open and free to the public. A talk, literacy and the social pressures will end the monthly celebra celebration of Black History Month on February 28th at 6 p.m. in the Campbell Student Union Social Hall. For more information, you contact the Equity and Campus Diversity Office at 716-878-62110. The Fashion Student Association will be having a program called Hip Hop in Fashion on February 27th. The program is about how hip hop has influenced fashion throughout the years. That impact has created some iconic trends in brands. For example, some of the trends in the 90s were oversized jerseys, overalls with straps down, Air Jordans and flannels. Brands that were trendy back in the 90s are still trendy now are Air Jordans and Polo. The event will be held at 6.30 in Bolger North. The Buffalo State community is encouraged to come out to the program. The bu come out to the program. Coming after the break, our very own Jess Frieda will be sitting down with Davia Graham, one of the student Buffalo State's most experienced tour guides. We'll be right back. Three, two, one, cue them, take camera two. You're watching the Buffalo Review TV, produced by Stripes Media. You can find out more about our show at our website, thebuffalorevue.wordpress.com, and we welcome your feedback. If you have a question, comment, or story idea, you can email us at thebuffalorevue at gmail.com. Welcome back to the Buffalo Review TV. I'm Jess Frieda. Buffalo State is about to hold another one of their informative campus tours coming up on February 27th. These tours are to help prospective students get to know the campus and see why Buffalo State is a great choice to further their education. Joining us today is Davia Graham, one of the tour guides that helps to represent Buffalo State. Thanks so much for coming in today. No problem. So how long have you been one of the campus tour guides here? Um, I started last year, so this is my second year. And did you start last year as in the beginning of school year, like last semester? Yeah, um, fall semester last year. Um, so what made you want to be a tour guide? Like what about it um, made you want to start? Um, I just thought that it would be a really good leadership opportunity for me. Um, I saw like when the tours go on my freshman year, they were touring around Union Hall. And I thought it was pretty cool. So when I saw the flyers to do a pie, I just went for it. Before you came in, did you attend one of the tours yourself at all? No, I didn't actually. Um, were there any certain requirements that you needed to become one of the tour guides? Um, yeah, your GPA generally has to be like a 2.5 and above. Yes. You need a few letters of recommendation, well not letters of recommendation, but just a few references to put down. Um, the application asks you a variety of questions about just yourself, um, different leadership opportunities that you've done in the past. So when you say you have to put down a reference, what kind of reference do you need? Do you need just like a family member, a friend, a professor? Um, more so like a faculty member or a previous uh, job that you had before. So someone who kind of knows your work. Yeah. Okay, so that seems pretty simple enough. So what does an average tour consist of? Um, well, the average tour length is like an hour and a half or so. Um, we have like our own 
script that we follow, but honestly, over time, you just kind of develop your own way and um, method of giving the tour. Um, so it starts at Moot, and we go around uh, the Rocco Quad, um, point out all the buildings, the bus stop areas, and we move into the library. Um, from the Child library up. to the union, the union to um, the science building, and then okay. maybe Houston Gym, Sports Arena, maybe it fell down, uh, the sure. technology building, uh, they see Porter, um, North Wing, South Wing, Chase Hall, and then back to New York. So, how do we so it goes in one big circle. Okay, so. Do you feel as if there's one part you guys kind of put more of a focus on rather than another, like one hall or anything? Um, I would say the newer renovated buildings, um, those are the buildings that we actually go into. So like the technology building, the gym, and the science building are the buildings that we actually show, mm -hmm. um, mainly because they're new and they're you know, really nice. So. Yeah. Um, so out of every single part of the tour, what do you feel is the most beneficial to prospective students that are hoping to come in? I think when they ask questions about your own personal experience and what made you want to go to Buffalo City, like those type of questions where I can actually give my own opinion and input, um, I think they get a lot out of it and they give them a sense of, you know, where it is that they may want to go if it is here. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so what are the most common questions that usually get either, well, from both students and parents? Um, I get a lot of questions about the classes and the professors, um, like how that structure, um, social life, like if there's a lot of events that go on on campus, stuff like that. Um, I get a lot of questions about the dorms, like roommate situations. Um, if they are in a particular major, like for instance, if one of them is interested in what I'm majoring in, because we do introduce ourselves so they know what we're majoring in and everything. Um, I'll get a lot of questions about um, the classes that I take and, you know, what that entails and everything. And then, of course, you know, why the two book was taken if I like it. So it's kind of like a personal one on Yeah, it's, that's the best way to go. Now, is there any part of the tour, since you've been doing this is your second year, is there any part of the tour you think could be changed to either make it better, possibly? That's a good question. Um, off the top of my head, I would say no, um, only because I feel like we pretty much do everything, and I think we cover all the important parts of the campus. So I don't, I don't really think there's anything that would necessarily need to change. Yeah. So what's the usual feedback that you get um, from from students, parents, even faculty who see it? Um. Usually, um, they're pretty grateful about the tour um, afterwards. I uh, feel like they get a really good insight afterwards. So I, you know, I always get thanks and everything um, after the tour is concluded, and um, ask them if they have like any, you know, last minute questions they want to ask me. I usually direct them to um, somebody else in the admissions office if I can't answer any of the questions that they have, but. Usually it's pretty good feedback that I get after the one and the That's good. Like, I mean, we've all seen the, you know, we've all been in the high school students tour once before. Yeah. Um, as a tour guide now, what do you feel is the most rewarding part of it, of being, being one of the tour guides to help show these students yeah. hopefuls? I think it's like making a difference in there because it's like we're representing the school. Mm -hmm. So being able to do that and then knowing at the end of the tour that they got a good positive feel of the school then that's good because I don't I wouldn't like it if you know a par parent or a kid is you know disappointed in the tour so um so it's nice to know that they get a you know good positive feedback about the school. That's good that you said you were such positive work. Do you ever have you ever thought that it can have a negative impact to someone before like maybe it didn't really fit them as well as um, it did for some I others? Really say like negative. Um, I've had, I, in the past I've had tours where there would be a family that would end up leaving in the middle of the tour. So um, that can mean to you because they just didn't care for what they were seeing. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't really reflect on me. 
um, that's the whole point of giving the course that way they can actually see the school, what they like, what they dislike, and you know, if they find that there's something that they dislike, I don't really think it's necessarily a reflection on me, I think it's just a reflection on the school themselves and their opinion on it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You definitely gave us a lot of information. I personally, I've always wanted to be a tour guide, but I wasn't ever sure how to do it. Um, so, what do you feel when it comes to like a leadership role? Because you mentioned that they look for that. Um, how do you feel this helps you progress with leadership roles in the future with your work um, ethic? I think it's helped me like establish relationships with people and just really work on my like talking skills and. Um, I'm a pretty like, shy person, so doing the tours kind of helps me like, be more outgoing. Yeah. Now, more than just the leadership level, because you're saying it helps you when it comes to communicating with people, yeah. what other skills do you think becoming one of the tour guides well, has? You definitely you have to be responsible, and you definitely have to, um, how do I put it, um, like, who gets certain questions about, um, you know, in comparison to, like, the University of Buffalo. So it's kind of like you have to just keep your mind straight and just know um, how to answer certain questions that may be, you know, a little bit... Um, yeah, it's just kind of just being mature about going forward with certain questions that you may be asked, you know. Of course, if someone asks you, oh, um, is this a party school, like, you're not going to go and say, oh, yeah, you know, like, there's parties yeah. all the time. Like, you just have to, you know, be mature about it and not give away stuff that shouldn't be said in that type of setting. Now, is there a selling point that you personally use when you're giving a tour to hopefully get students to come in and apply and hopefully join us? Um, I usually uh, really talk about how the class sizes are really relatively small and how that helps you mature more as a student, you know, as opposed to having like 300 people in one class, like you have like a more, um, better relationship. More personal. With, yeah, more personal relationship with the, the, the professor, which the outcome of that will help you grow better student, in my own opinion. So that's what I really um, tell, you know, students and parents about the classes that it will help you make you better as a student. Well, thank you so much for coming today. Next up, we have Khalid Terrell sitting down with Jossie Curry and Amanda Johnson, members of the brand new Travelers Club here at Buffalo State. We'll be right back. Three, two, one, cue them, take camera two. You're watching the Buffalo Review TV, produced by Stripes Media. You can find out more about our show at our website, thebuffalorevue.wordpress.com, and we welcome your feedback. If you have a question, comment, or story idea, you can email us at thebuffalorevue at gmail.com. Welcome back to the Buffalo Review. I'm Khalid Terrell. Buffalo State has welcomed a new club to campus this spring semester, the Travelers Club. Joining us today is Traveler Club President Jossie Curry and Vice President Amanda Johnson. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. No problem. Uh, why don't you guys start off by telling us what your club is about? Well, we actually got the wonderful opportunity to study abroad in Italy. Um, when we returned, we kind of were going through a little bit of a culture shock. So we thought it would be great to kind of create a travel community amongst others. You know, after talking to friends who haven't traveled, you realize that not too many people understand the experience that you went through. Um, so we reached out to our community on campus here and to other individuals to see if there's others who are interested in, you know, just creating a community of discussing traveling or traveling opportunities. And we found a large group of people who are really interested in starting something like this. Okay. And who is the club open to? Is it open to anybody? Yeah, it's open to any SUNY student at the moment just because not only are we going to be educating students on traveling opportunities, but SUNY offers over a thousand study abroad programs. So through our program, we would love to also try to help promote those too. As president and vice president, what are your roles uh, with the club? Well, as my role, I'll be acting as li liaison mostly from our program to the executive board, um, to the campus as well. And since I'm a senior, I'm going to be doing it the most I can since it's going to be my last semester here. So it'll be the last little bit of hands I have in the pot. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of everything here, but that's just because it'll be my last semester as well. 
And then when someone attends your uh, club meetings, what can they expect from the, the meetings? Well, generally what they can expect for our future meetings is we're going to go and we have a theme. So each month is going to be some sort of new theme. For instance, let's just say next month is going to be Southern, you know, South Asia. Um, so they can be come in and expect to be educated on traveling through South Asia. Uh, we're going to play some games that's going to get you interactive but as well. Um, you're going to understand some things and some neat things to do while you're in South Asia as well as all the different educational opportunities, all the different employment opportunities that you have and all the really cheap ways to get there. And I understand your uh, your new club on campus and your first meeting was just this past uh, yes. February, February yes. 7th? Yes, yes uh, it was. So how do you think it turned out? I think it actually turned out wonderful. We had a great turnout and you you know we're there as well, so thank you for your attendance. Uh, we met with some Chilean guests who were here studying for two weeks, um, most of which were all education majors. Um, and I think the turnout was good. We had a few Bus State students too who were in attendance. Um, but after that meeting, I actually got a ton of emails from students who were really interested for further um, you know, information and for further gathering. So I think overall it turned out really great and we definitely created a presence on our campus. Um, now you mentioned you had chilling guests. Is that going to be a regular thing every meeting where you have guests come in? Well, we hope so. We're going to be working really closely with like the equity um, group as well because I know that they do themes every month. Um, but with that being said, hopefully we have maybe some even AAA travel agents come and speak to our guests. We're kind of just toss it up. Um, I really don't want it to be where we have visitors every month because I don't want it to just be consistently just that. Um, but I would love to definitely have another group of um, studying students, even maybe the students who are here from the UK, you know, before they leave, definitely talk to our students and see what's up with that. It's definitely a platform to just share a lot of different stories and tell any kind of challenges that anybody might have had, but also be here for support and hear what other experiences are out there. Yeah. Do you feel like that is the ultimate goal of the club, or do you think there's a bigger picture with the, the club? I mean, that's a pretty big picture. <laughs> and that's a really good question. Um, I think ultimately what I would, if I was a student attending this club, I would want to gain just a, the inspiration to travel. You know, not too many people are really knowledgeable on how cheap and how possible it is to really do some traveling, you know, um, and talking to the right people can definitely get you inspired. I mean, I've spoke with a ton of students who live on campus who have never been to our downtown Canal side, you know, which is, which is crazy because that's one of Buffalo's biggest, biggest attractions. Mm -hmm. That's good. Do you feel like this club will have like a strong staying power here? Because I understand you started it and this is your last semester. So right, yes. What are you expecting for the future? Um, well, we know that we are going to be a USG founded funded club and I know that this club is going to flourish. I know that I mean, we already have a huge list of students who are already interested. Um, we are planning a group trip to Toronto at the end of the semester. So I know that is turning some heads too. So yeah, I definitely believe that right now we're getting um, student life registered. And I know within the next couple of semesters, we'll definitely be USG funded. Okay, so you're planning a trip to Toronto at the end of the semester. Do yes. you think maybe in the future you'll have a bigger trip in plan? Maybe I hope so. Or? I hope so. I mean, we, I, I personally right now work in the International Education Office as a student recruiter for the Study Away programs. So my goal is to just maybe even go through one of those programs and get us to go for like a J term or get them to go, you know, I won't be here. Um, but, you know, definitely advise a group when I'm off campus and maybe we can get a J term or go to Italy or, you know, but I definitely want to take them international, which is why I said Toronto, it's close. And we'll do an international tour through Toronto to kind of give, you know, students that really big vibe because Toronto is totally um, a center of international culture. Okay. Now, I understand in the beginning of semester, you were looking for officers that have Yes. Uh, already been fulfilled, yes. but say next semester yes. when officers are graduated, right. how do uh, somebody apply for such a position? Well, we, towards the end of the semester, I think right before our end of the semester trip, we will start sending out emails about that, um, and then definitely probably some follow-up emails over the summer for voting terms. We will be looking for a new treasurer and a new secretary. As well as a president, right? Well, yes, yes, yes. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, yes. yes. But we have someone in mind for that position as well, yeah. but it will be on a voting system Maybe as well. Maybe your vice president? You yeah, see, that's what we're you hoping. see yourself moving up? Well, I hope so. Yeah. I'll, I will be here for another two years, so I'm hoping to see the club through getting our funding and getting more officers and getting more students involved. That's good. Yeah. Um, so, like, where do your uh, club meetings take place? Well, as of right now, since we are not fully registered, we're not allowed to have ongoing access to rooms, but we are in the middle of creating our constitution. So, fingers crossed that we can book Butler 208 in the library every first Tuesday and every last Tuesday of the month. 
Okay, so like you would have two meetings each month. So yeah, about well, eight meetings this semester. Yes, but we're also every third month we will be going out to a restaurant to kind of tie into the theme that we're having. And if we're not going out to a restaurant on the third Tuesday, we'll kind of do a luncheon here on campus. Okay. So what kind of restaurants did you have in mind? Well, let's just say if next next month would be, I don't know, what J Japanese, you know, Japan, and we're focusing on Japan culture and centering our groups around Japan, we would go to, I think, Saigon. Saigon is on Elmwood. It's a nice Japanese restaurant. So kind of that theme, you know, if we're reversing around, if we're surrounded around Italian culture for the month, we would go to an Italian restaurant and so on and so forth. Okay. And I know you have different themes for each month. Is your itinerary are planned out? Like Our itinerary is not planned out. Since this is the first semester, we kind of wanted to do a group consensus. I kind of wanted to see where our members want to go with it and see some ideas that our members have. Um, kind of just throw out places out there on the board and see which places people re really agree with most. I mean, I think it'd be really interesting to do places that none of us has never been before. That way, as a group, we can do some research and as a group, it can be like a, a learning lesson, you know? So as it is the Travelers Club, yes. and some of your members have traveled, what are some of the places that people have been or are from? Well, we it's got... It's a very long list. <laughs> yeah, it's a very long <laughs> list. Um, I guess we can start with our officers. Uh, me being the president, I studied abroad in Italy. Um, and through that three months, I mean, I went all over Europe from Barcelona to Amsterdam. Um, and she traveled as well, many places. I also studied in Italy and I traveled to Paris, London, and Athens, as well as inside of Italy. And then our secretary has traveled to Thailand through Buffalo State. She is actually the Gilman Award scholarship winner as well. And then our treasurer is Italian and she's also lived in Italy for a few months as well. Um, and she's uh, nearly fluent in the Italian language. So all of us have a really deep cultural background for this club as well. So do does your group, uh, does your club attract like members from different countries? And I mean, I would definitely say so. If I think our campus alone at the moment is really diverse, um, and I think our in general we're definitely pulling out those those students who are who are co who come from diverse backgrounds, you know, and who have not traveled a lot or who have traveled a lot and just want that center of community. Yeah, it was very informative. Thank uh, you. We'll just thank you guys again for joining us. Today. Well, we appreciate you having us. Um, be sure to check out the Travelers Club this semester and future semesters to come. I'm Cleed Terrell, and this is the Buffalo Review. The Buffalo Review TV, produced by Stripes Media, we welcome your feedback. If you have a question, comment, or story idea, you can email us at thebuffalorevue at gmail.com.